呃，一敲大厂它有二十年的一些以上的一些治安从业经验。那从二零零五年加入 Line， 那接着就带着 Line 的治安团队啊、呃，然后处理了许多的呃治安的一些问题。对，所以他在今年他们呃为我们准备了一个演讲，也蛮特别的，因为今年刚好是 Line 成立的十周年，所以他为我们分享在这十年来，哎，他们在 Line 上面遇到的呃，尤其是身份认证，呃，从以前一开始做的可能呃有很多问题。然后接遇到了骇客真正的攻击，接着他怎么改进？那第二版又遇到什么问题？然后接着再怎么改进？一直从十年前到现在，他怎么去改进这些治安议题？他都有去做一些呃分析。好，所以我们接下来就呃欢迎我们的呃一下拉桑来为我们呃演讲这一场的议程。那这场议程是预录的，那呃我们这场也没有 Q&A， 所以这边先跟大家说明一下。好，那就让我们呃进入呃。Ishara 上的演讲。Hello, I'm now Sejal from Line. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for inviting me as a speaker, and I'm very honored to have a speech in this event, Hitcon 2021. Today, uh, the title is "Ten Years、uh, Key Challenges in Line Cybersecurity and Privacy." Since we launched. Uh, Line Messengers in 2011. This year is our 10th anniversary. So today I'm going to talk about our key challenges that we have been doing for these 10 years for cybersecurity and privacy. This is my profile. Now I'm in charge of the head of CISO department. Since I joined Line in 2015. I have been in charge of trust and safety, security consulting for line services, and have been handling many kinds of security issues of line, not only in Japan but also Taiwan and other Asian countries. And also been leading the security teams and also working as a fire board member of fire alliance. Basically, I am working in Japan and in line stock office, but. Uh, actually, I was working in Line Taiwan office in Taipei since last year's December for almost six months for some reasons. So I wanted to、uh, visit conference venue physically of this event in Taipei, but I couldn't do it due to COVID-19 situation. Anyway, I'm gonna start my presentation. Closing the distance.、Uh, this is. Lines mission. That means bringing together the information services and people to get them closer and closer. This is the dynamic user base、uh, for Line. <coughs> We have 189 million in global、uh, MAU.、Uh, in Japan, we have. 89 million in Taiwan, 21 million in Thailand, 52 million, and for these three countries,、uh, almost more than 70 percent MAU、uh, per population. Especially in Taiwan, it's over. It's almost 90 percent. This is a hi history of line. <clears throat> uh, in 2011,、uh, we have launched the line. After that, we release Line Pay, Line Global Blockchain, and Line Bank Thailand and Taiwan, and also Indonesia. And Line Bank Japan will be coming soon in the next year. Uh, line services could be a part of our daily life. Currently, called、uh, life online. This is a concept, a story of one day of your life. For example,、uh, when you get up in the morning, the first thing to do might be checking the news by using Line News or Line Today, and order the pizza delivery for lunch. And time with the、uh, Maikan of Japan or Line Man of Thailand, <coughs> and get get coupon from official accounts, and 
uh, get shopping using Line Pay and enjoy music with Line Music or Line TV of Taiwan, Thailand on the way back home after work. Uh, in such a day of life, uh, we could say that this user could spend um, much time of daily life in some of Line services. This is the concept of life online. Uh, it is also natural to say that line is expected uh, to provide safety services that protect and handle the user data and its privacy appropriately. And practically, we have been doing that. It is always important for us to keep the user's trust for line while our users can enjoy our services. And if we could uh, keep such a condition, we believe that LINE could become a sustainable digital platform that meets our social responsibilities. Tim Cook of Apple has said, like, uh, we shouldn't ask our customers to make a trade-off between privacy and security. We need to offer them the best of both. This is just a challenge for also LINE. In today's presentation, I'd like to talk about uh, three perspectives, technology, process, culture. By these uh, three perspectives, uh, we have been working on and challenging for cybersecurity and privacy. Is by technology. This is a story of Lion Account Security. <clears throat> Line account security model is based on mobile, so um, and not based on web. So, in general, the potential risk of account hijack is potential uh, is a uh, different from the the case of web, because the mobile device service account can exist based on one phone number and let's say the two mobile devices cannot bind to one phone number it's true and so um, as soon as the normal user's account is hijacked by the user abuser the normal user's application let's say line application becomes unavailable this is a different from web And in early days of line application, the line account login certification was very simple without any two-factor authentication. So uh, it was very weak against password list attack. Um, so potentially we had an account takeover program and uh, in real, after 2012, we found a huge number of victim users of uh, account takeover, especially in Japan and Taiwan, it was a kind of big social problem. Remember, remember, remember that. Uh, so in 2014, we have introduced four-digit PIN code for blo blocking password list attack. But as you know, it's really old style, and it's not. Uh, it's not a good countermeasure for password list. Uh, you can easily imagine that many of users tend to use the same four-digit phone, four-digit number with the password or email address. So that's why it was still weak against password list attack, and we found so many abusers and many victims. Then two thousand. 16 we introduced a new migration rule uh, which is line will check if the user has previous device or previous phone number when migrating to new device with new phone number uh, in the setting menu, menu you can check the, the account migration switch <coughs> of line application this is one of them and we found this approach was very powerful to password list attack 
and we found there was no password list attack available and succeeded after this new is released that was powerful at the time yeah but at the time after that after several months we found new type of abusers uh, the approach was social engineering abusers tries to talk to the normal user after taking over his or her friend once uh, the abuser pretends to be a friend and start the communication hi help me uh, w on whatsapp uh, I have lost my phone and could you tell me your phone number and yeah my phone number is blah 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 okay uh, the pin code is sent to your SMS uh, please tell me the, the pin okay this is 7158 that's all um, but doing this approach uh, abusers really succeeded to uh, get account and, and succeed the take account takeover <clears throat> and we also found the, the, the number of victims has increased again unfortunately speaking the situation line uh, it was worse worse situation because we know that kind of changing our specification will never improve this situation and the problem so we change it the approach the data analysis and machine learning when the victims report to the situation to line we start to analyze uh, the data and develop the model to identify such abusers by uh, using the abusers behaviors and operations and attributes as well and in September uh, 2019 uh, uh, almost three years after new migration rule is released finally we have succeeded to examine it line account takeover cases made it zero since then uh, we don't have a massive account takeover cases like before so data analysis and machine learning was finally very powerful even for social engineering this is a story of line account security and our challenge next one is FIRO FIRO is a new authentication standard uh, using public key cryptography and its specification is standardized in FIRE Alliance and major platform iOS Android Windows are supporting for example uh, the web version is a really well-known standard based on FIRE specification okay uh, this is story of line and FIRE since line joined in FIRE Alliance as a board member we have been releasing FIRE enabled services in line pay and line and this year we have open sourced our FIRE 2 server software and I will uh, explain uh, passwordless line in detail from the next slide this is the use case of passwordless line um, basically um, Password uh, will be never required to input in login with desktop line application uh, in this scenario. Uh, only for the first time login, six digit pin is required to input. Uh, yeah, but after that, password input is not needed in that device. This is the a uh, high-level system architecture of passwordless line protocol when the file protocol is initiated line application will be work, woken up by push and generate the key pairs of file and make uh, signatures as a part of file protocol and so on so but we have uh, several issues to implement as in general, most of the developer will face the same issue. First one, how to and uh, where to manage the 
the public key pairs for FIDO. The second one is how wide OS versions and platforms do we support? How do we realize a FIDO policy flexibly? Uh, for example, one of the applications allows only biometric, but another application allows bi biometric and PIN and uh, several kinds of authentication methods. That kind of flexi po uh, flexible policy, uh, maybe we have to handle. So in order to resolve these issues, we have de developed Line Trusted Security Module, LTSM. Um, this is the client-side architecture uh, for a file or enabled application based on LTSM. RP can uh, call the file client API that is supported by LTSM core. Um, LTSM core will provide the, um, some basic functions that realizes the file features. And it the LTSM also supports the abstraction for uh, the authenticator, user key management, and attestation key management. And especially, uh, LTSM can uh, support not only Android key store, including TE, iOS keychain, but also white box encryption. This is a safer protection software module to, to protect the cryptographic keys in software level. Uh, in case that device doesn't support Android key store or uh, in such case, TSM can support that. So thus, the TSM has been developed to support as many types of platform and services as, much, as possible. Um, as you can understand, in the previous slide, Line has developed the LTSM, which is like um, adopting the white box encryption and the supporting the wide coverage of both iOS and the Android version, and abstraction of different uh, of platform features like API in each OS or each OS or authenticator and sequestration and so on. Okay, next one is letter sealing. It's an end-to-end encryption. End-to-end uh, -end encryption is the, by design, the server side, let's say line server, is not able to decrypt the uh, encrypted message nor obtain the encryption key. Uh, it's different from TLS. Um, basic concept of letter sealing is design uh, uh, like uh, any line application must support latency. Second one is any secret key must be handled only in line application in the client side. And third one, our uh, line server is responsible only for limited functions, uh, gateway for key exchanges, message transmission, and um, uh, public key management, and so on. This slides to explain how the encryption key is shared and how the message is encrypted and decrypted between one-to-one -one user. Basically, every line user has ECDH key pairs. Uh, this is generated in line application, no, not in the server side, of course. And each stock room of line share a secret key is generated by using the the room members. Then the plain message will be encrypted using the shared secret uh, with using uh, SHA-256 and an ASGCM and and C and tag generated by ASGCM will be sent to uh, fr sent from A to B, and the user B can decrypt it. Uh, yes, and uh, we, as we apply ASGCM, uh, so receiver side can 
obtain the play message with a uh, with a decryption key, and also the check the integrity by using uh, this this one data authentication tag. And here, by assuming that this user is using line application in iPhone, but also using the Windows at the same for the same line account. So line application will be required to synchronize the ECDH key, key pairs, including a secret key, and shared secret of the room and also messages. The question is uh, how we design uh, the security for such synchronizing the keys. The point is when the user login in the uh, the line account in the new devices, how to synchronize? I will explain that. Uh, on the left side, already the account is uh, logging in this smartphone, and the user would like to uh, log in in the new device with desktop line application. Starting from generating the ECDH key pair for desktop line application in the client side. It, this is also in the client side. And see, send the ECDH public key uh, that is encrypted with six digit PIN code. This is the point. And uh, the user can see and input this six digit PIN code and then the user side can create the decryption key and then uh, so then the smartphone side will get the public key of this uh, of desktop ap application. So then uh, both sides can comp compute the shared secret by using uh, this ECDH uh, cryptographic algorithm. So th this temporary uh, shared secret can enable the two applications to send E2E message. I mean, by using this uh, E2E connection, the smartphone side will send the secret key of ECDH to desktop, from smartphone to desktop. This is a solution in, in case of line to letter setting. So then the two applications can synchronize the cryptographic key especially in case uh, ECD is public key and uh, private key. And next one is ongoing challenging. Uh, first one is future of letter seeding. The scope of letter seeding includes text message, location-based message, and voice call, video call for limited features. But point is how uh, can we expand the scope so in order to do that we need to resolve the issues regarding for which format like thumbnail generation optimizing uh, the encoding and resizing and then resending and transferring and storing and so on uh, anyway as of today we are still on challenging for this issue Number two is uh, assuming that situation like a uh, user A sends a certain message content to user B with with end-to-end -end encryption, but uh, Line would like to use static data even though Line doesn't need to know the content itself. For example, the free sticker. If uh, we apply the free sticker with E2E in, in future, we can see that content uh, technically. But if line could know uh, what type of sticker, free sticker is popular for teenagers in Christmas season, for example, this kind of information will be a good reference for creating new popular sticker in future. So it might be reasonable for it reasonable that line would like to know that 
know this kind of static statistic information but in order to realize that uh, there's several problem regarding the privacy uh, so uh, we look forward to uh, federated learning technology as a core technology for solving the problem while keeping the user privacy with E2E and never send out the raw statistic data to line server but line could know a rough but privacy protected statistic data getting but by getting um inputting a uh, noise uh into the into the the raw data this is also an ongoing challenge though uh, we expect the challenge could realize the best balance of privacy and best business uh, in future still on going challenge next one is a by process it is also another important factor in cybersecurity and privacy as you know uh, there is a famous uh, quote by Bruce Schneier security is not a product but a process As we have many products to release uh, in every month, sometimes in every week, our service production life cycle is always in operation. And we also have a security and privacy development life cycle on that for creating a better security and privacy for the product. And I will pick up some process that we are doing First one is PIA. PIA is a privacy impact assessment process. It's a, in line, it's a mandatory, mandatory process for any kind of services uh, that handles the personal data or sensitive data or uh, privacy related information and so on. This is, process is to confirm the services compliance with existing laws and internal rules and and also policies and in addition to that to meet the expectation to privacy or expectation from users um, uh, government media or other stakeholders during the course of the process PIA team uh, consisting uh, legal and data protection experts uh, sorry check that uh, what kind of data is collected and why and who access and uh, how to control and environment to control data uh, what's the system or operational environment to control the data um, anyway uh, recently we have many services that need to handle user data for in, in mainly improving the user experience of the service the number of PIA requests is increasing rapidly year by year. We also have another mandatory process called risk assessment. Uh, this is a, a kind of manual security test done by our security engineers. Basically, any services are required to pass the risk assessment process in QA stage before releasing. But uh, we have so many risk assessment requests recently uh, because the number of services are increasing so our team is also challenging to develop automated security testing environment for supporting the risk assessment process this is called SIMS uh, security issue management system uh, the concept is based on DevSecOps and for example, triggered by the event from Git or Jenkins, a security scanner will start to scan the product automatically. And notification of the report will be also automatically sent to the communication channel, like Slack. Uh, we have al already developed and adopted this system to the some part of the real product. And now we are going to expand the scope in the next year. And I hope this system could optimize the security engineer's resources for risk assessment pro process. 
Next is uh, three processes after releasing background to program and reporting and awareness. Uh, we are running Line security Bangladesh T program since 2016. Now it is on Hacker Hacker One platform. We can have uh, reports regarding vulnerability on, or security pro problems of our product from outside engineers in global. And the number of report is increasing year by year. Um, especially 2020, the number of report has reached the maximum. <clears throat> this figure is related to the background program. Um, valid, valid report is over 30% out of all reports are found to be valid. That's more than 100 reports in a year, so it's so helpful for us. Amount of bounty in last year we paid almost 100,000 US dollar. Type of vulnerability, there are many significant type of vulnerability you can find. For, exa for example, information disclosure, uh, reflected XSS and improper access control, SSRF, that covers almost 50 percentage. Uh, only by looking at this, uh, we can understand how wealthy activity the bug bounty program is. Since 2017, we have an annual uh, campaign focusing on account takeover and phishing and so on as an awareness activity. Uh, something people have to care about in the internet life. In these recent uh, few years, other internet companies also joined this campaign with Line and to liven up the campaign. Now we have a common website and here uh, provide interactive quizzes and external links to the web website uh, of participating companies. This is another awareness activity, uh, Line Privacy Day. January 28 is internationally known as a uh, Privacy Day, and since nine. 2019, Line organizes an event called Line Privacy Day to help the users and uh, employees also understand the risk of the privacy, how to protect the privacy and how to do now. And the better understanding and awareness privacy in user user side is one of the most important issue, and it's also our challenge. This is uh, then in. In Japan side, and this is in Taiwan side. We also have a such an awareness activities in Taiwan. Uh, Line Taiwan has been running a large campaign for users awareness, addressing the cyber security and privacy risk and internet safety. For these several years, Line has uh, partnered with iWin. iWin is a Taiwan same government organization dedicated to uh, promoting safety of internet environment. And this year's awareness campaign addressed a program uh, related to teenagers and children's safety. As they are uploading their private photos usually, however, which might be spread involuntarily, uh, even though 40 percentage of them don't know how to deal with it, this is uh, one of the big social problems in Taiwan. During this campaign, we utilize this Line Timeline, Line Today, Line Music, and an uh, iWin official account as well. And uh, this kind of campaign is not only for awareness for users, but also contributing to eliminate such a social uh, program. This is about reporting. This is also important activity from uh, transparency point of view. Every year, Line publishes a um, transparency report. In this report, we disclose the number of cases we respond to government data requests based on legal instruments such as search warrants. And we also show the breakdown 
by country and uh, uh, quant type also. In addition to that, we also disclose a, a content moderation report where uh, we show how how many contents are taken down by our monitoring activities in violation of our term of use. Uh, example, the promotion of illegal activities and uh, obscene content and spam and so on. For line side, we could be aware of our social responsibility through uh, disclosing this type of report. And for user side, they could have an opportunity to understand and judge the soundness and social significance of line's relationship with uh, government and also this activity itself as well. We also publish this encryption, uh, encryption report that includes uh, which cryptographic algorithm we are using and what, of what type of message the letter setting applies to and how much message are uh, encrypted uh, as a statistic data and so on. Such information are updated and disclosed uh, almost every year. The third factor is the culture. In most of our organization, uh, I think we have a big issue that how to educate and improve skills of employees and engineers for security and privacy. Not only employee, uh, like uh, phishing and IPT, uh, but also the, for the engineers, like infra security and server side engineers, and security engineers, secure coding, uh, configuration, secure process, uh, and so on. Uh, then we have developed called line class. This is an internal education environment supporting the content management, education content management, and uh, participant management, and a score on achievement management, and so on. We value such a uh, skill development for security members. Uh, we want it. We want it as a one of our culture, and also value to develop something we, uh, something by ourselves when we need something. This is also one of our culture. First motivation of this line class was actually the the only for and uh, focusing on our security team members skill development in two years ago. But currently, this is used for all, uh, uh, every line employees since last year because the quality was good enough. Interaction. Interaction with outside experts is also one of our important culture. Uh, this slide shows uh, the security engineer event hosted in Japan, Taiwan, Korea called BEX IO. Our team member is planning and hosting, facilitating this event and in, uh, inviting guests from outside. Uh, this is a photo of uh, BEX Japan in Tokyo, ofi Tokyo office. And this is a list of presentation of the past event in Japan. Uh, we have all seven times in Japan since 2019. This photo is also Bex Taiwan held in Taipei. Totally we had eight times in Taiwan. And we also had a Bex Korea one time. And basically we strongly support this kind of event for constructive community building and uh, providing valuable opportunity for the, the growth of security engineers in each country and region. This is also the past uh, presentation list uh, in, the, in the event in Taiwan. In, ta in the case of Taiwan, we have around 30 up to 50 attendees in each event.
This is an, uh, another event. We also organize the uh, event called Security Summit since 2017. We hosted in San Francisco, Rome, Paris, and Tokyo as well. And this is kind of an international summit focusing on security, data, and privacy. Uh, in this event, Uh, we invite security and privacy experts of global authorities and have their keynote speech and also open discussion to share the current security and privacy and digital identity, identity issue. Um, each country's and region situation regarding the data privacy regulations and interpretation and practical operations against such situation like uh, GDPR and so on. Future visions against that topics and situations. Um, past speakers are really gorgeous. Robert Tajan, uh, he's famous as a winner of Turing Award in 1986, uh, kind of legend of computer science. And uh, Kowei Wu uh, from Taiwan, board of directory, uh, uh, former ICANN board of direct directory in uh, in Taiwan, and also Sakimura-san, uh, the chairman of OPID Foundation from Japan, and university professor, deputy minister of Taiwan, and the World Economic Forum, and blah, blah, blah. We have so many uh, professionals and experts to invite in this uh, Security Summit event. Okay, this is a summary. Okay, in today's presentation, I have introduced Line's key challenges for these 10 years by technology, by process, and by culture. That included multiple directional approaches and challenges. And of course, to keep on such challenges is necessary for Line as one of important social responsibility. And also, we know we have to keep on updating and fighting better things for getting closer to the best for cybersecurity and privacy. We believe that such sustainable challenge could be the source of our users' trust for line. That's all my presentation. Thank you very much.